The polls are closed. You know, if there's not a clear winner tonight, I think it's just a lot of anxiety. And the count is on. But overall, I felt good um, about the turnout and, and about people's resolve with this process. Here in Northeast Ohio and across the country, voters showed up. It's been two hours almost consistently all day. And tonight, <laughs> it's time for their voices to be heard. Well, tonight our crews are digging into all angles of this election and what it means for us here in Northeast Ohio. Well, as you can see, News 5 has you covered from the top of the ticket to the local races that matter to you as well. The presidential race still too close to call in Ohio. So far, the results are showing an edge for President Donald Trump. And right now we're watching several Ohio counties closely because they could give us clues about where Ohio will land. News 5's John Kosick has been crunching the numbers all night long. He's here to break down where we stand. How do things look, John? Well, pretty much the night has thus far played out like we thought it would, with Joe Biden jumping out to an early 350,000 vote lead in the state on the strength of that early vote. But then as the day of vote came in, the more traditional Republican vote followed. We saw the race tighten and Donald Trump take the lead. And this is where we stand right now with about 80 percent of the vote in Donald Trump leading by seven uh, percent here in the state of Ohio. Now, we saw uh, we want to take a look at Cuyahoga County, where Joe Biden was looking to come out with at least the 250,000 vote edge. At this hour, it stands uh, with only about 200,000 vote, he leads Donald Trump in the county by. Right now, that 69% is only about 4% more than Hillary Clinton was getting in the county. He needed to do better than that tonight. Uh, let's take a look at some of the nine pivot counties. That went for Donald Barack Obama twice and switched to Donald Trump. Trumbull County, home to Lordstown, they went for Donald Trump in 2016 by 6.2% voting for him. Tonight, a larger margin, 11% is voting for him. All nine of the pivot counties are showing for Trump right now. The one exception being Portage County that four years ago went for him by better than 17 points. Tonight going for Joe Biden by 11 points. Or as you see, it just narrowed recently to down just to that. Now, one of the counties we're looking at, Lorain County, home to a razor thin overtime win for Hillary Clinton four years ago, showing around a 3% margin uh, for Donald Trump at this hour. And finally, I want to take a look at the county that most closely mirrored the statewide results four years ago. That would be Wood County outside of Toledo, which was only off 0.1% four years ago, is tonight coming close to, again, matching what we are seeing play out statewide, an eight-point lead, basically the same margin that he had, President Trump had in that county uh, four years ago. Uh, basically, we're seeing that play out. We're also seeing Donald Trump hold serve in many of those smaller counties. Built on the 30 small counties, he won with 70 percent or more of the vote in 2016, either staying at that or building on it. Mercer County on the Indiana border showing a Trump win with 82 percent of the vote tonight. John Kosick, we appreciate you staying on top of all of that for us. And Cuyahoga County is currently reporting 67.85 percent voter turnout for the 2020 election. And believe it or not, that's actually slightly below the 69 percent voter turnout in 2016. But still, across the county, we saw long lines as people turned out to make their voice heard. At the Broadview Heights Recreation Center, some voters tell us they wanted they waited two hours in line. Lisa Marshall was the last person to cast her ballot at the rec center after the polls closed at 7.30 tonight. It's cold, but every vote counts and just doing, doing what I need to do. So those ballots now in the hands of the Cuyahoga County Board of Elections. More than 200 Board of Elections staff members and temporary employees are counting more than 600,000 ballots. Okay, let's bring in five on your side investigator Joe Paganakis. Joe, turnout lower than expected, right? Just by a little bit there, Rob, they were expecting 70 percent, as you mentioned earlier, just under 68 percent. The biggest onslaught of ballots coming in here, to the Cuyahoga County Board of Elections warehouse, just before 9 o'clock tonight from 975 precincts. And it's a big county and a big job. The memory sticks and huge bags of ballots are being shuttled into the warehouse by several dozen teams of drivers that include one Democrat and one Republican on board. As we've been reporting, those long lines at multiple polling places in cities like Broadview Heights, Seven Hills, and North Royalton. Board of Elections Director Tony Perlotti told me the lines were caused by voters coming to the polls in large numbers 
earlier in the morning than expected. Also, a reduction in the total amount of voting stations and equipment at dozens of polling locations to provide safe social distancing standards and an unexpected number of people who wanted to use curbside voting. Well, the curbside process takes a lot longer to process than a person coming into the poll place just because it's a couple trips back and forth. Um, there might be a few people in the car, so that's multiple trips. And so um, those are all things that kind of impacted the speed. And so we're waiting for ballots and memory sticks from outlying precincts to come in from cities like Chagrin Falls and North Olmsted. Still, despite all of these issues, the Board of Elections here and it's more than 200 volunteers and staff members hope to have all precincts accounted for by 2 a.m. just three hours from now. Back to you guys. Busy, busy night, Joe Paganakis. Thank you, sir. Now, it is a bellwether county in a historically bellwether state. And four years ago, President Trump won big in Stark County after it helped Barack Obama win the White House twice. But will it flip again? News 5's Jordan Vandenberg talked to voters in this pivotal county, and he joins us live with more. Hey, Jordan. Yeah, you know, Stark County is kind of an interesting county because it re resembles a lot of different voting blocks. You have the rural areas, urban areas, agricultural, industrial, residential. It kind of encompasses everything. And if the early results are any indication, Stark County is in favor of Donald Trump and in quite a favor indeed. There are about 70% of the votes being counted and President Trump holds a 15 point lead over Joe Biden. And if that holds it, it'll be a bigger margin of victory than back in 2016. And when we talked to a lot of voters who came here to vote early, which also shattered records, the economy was on the minds of many. It happens every four years. Property lines become political battle lines. Whether it's the Biden bus or the Trump train, the inroads lead to Stark County. Supporting on the person that we believe in, Trump. Biden's gonna win in a landslide. A long line snakes around the Board of Elections for early voting. Meanwhile, records are falling. We're over double what we did in 2016. Compared to one week before the 2016 election, the number of people requesting ballots has grown 85%. And the number of people who have voted early has grown 410%. It plays well for both. I mean, I think that there is incentive on both sides to get your vote out and to vote safely and uh, on your own time rather than being forced to do it on one day. Stark County, the longtime swing county, has recently swung red and swung hard. After decidedly sending Obama to two terms, Trump carried Stark by 30,000 votes. Two years later, Governor DeWine won by 15,000. The Stark County Democratic Party expects 2020 to be different totally different. You know, it's a whole different campaign, how we reach people, what we're doing. The county's unique blend of agricultural, urban, and industrial areas provide a great cross-section of voting bases. Longtime Democrat Steve Lewis points to the ongoing pandemic and his support of Biden. He's capable. He knows what needs to be done, and he, he's not going to walk away from the pandemic and act like it's gone when it's, you know, it's raging. Across town, Trump faithfuls like Ryan Ryder look to the pre-pandemic economy as a sign of Trump's success. The county's unemployment rate was 4.2% last November, the lowest in nearly two decades. He doesn't want the tax hikes like Biden wants. They say it's only gonna hurt those who make over 200,000, that's bull <laughs> You think about it, if the big guy gets hurt, who's he gonna take it out on, the little guy, that's us. Perhaps it's a good thing these elections only happen every four years, but let's not forget, what happens on November 3rd is just as important as what happens on November 4th. That's what makes America so great. We have that freedom. And again, with about 68.5% of the total votes in Stark County being counted so far, Donald Trump has a 57 uh, percentage point uh, advantage over Joe Biden's 41 and a half percent. That is quite a large margin. Again, if it holds, it'll be a bigger margin of victory than back in 2016. Reporting live from the Stark County Board of Elections, Jordan Vandenberg, News 5. All right, Jordan, thank you. Now, Ohio shattered its record for early in-person and absentee voting as people avoided physically going to the polls during this pandemic. And the state shattered another record today, and it's one Governor Mike DeWine would have preferred that we had not broken. We're talking about the 4,229 new COVID-19 cases added over the last day. 
That's the largest single day rise in cases since the pandemic started. Our Jesse Schultz talked to the governor about what this means for Ohioans. Hey, Jesse. Yeah, DeWine says the bottom line is no matter if your candidate wins or loses tonight, tomorrow will still come. And our number one enemy should not be each other, but rather the coronavirus. And it's going to take every one of us working together, Democrat, Republican, Independent, uh, to beat back this virus, to get us through uh, till we get into the spring, into the summer. Uh, when we get the vaccine. Governor DeWine's message is clear. We have to control the spread of COVID-19. And the virus continues to fool us. We knew these numbers were likely to go up, but had no idea they were going to go up, frankly, this, this fast. And I think it's time for all of us to kind of reassess what we're doing in our own lives. He says the jump in cases is from people letting their guard down, casual get togethers with friends and family, weddings and funerals. What's at stake is whether our kids are going to be able to go to school in person. What's at stake is the safety of our grandparents in nursing homes. What's at stake is whether our hospitals are going to be overrun with people. I asked the governor if he believes early in person voting turnout had anything to do with the spike. He said no, not if people took precautions. I think there's a lot of things that we can do safely. Uh, as long as we've got a mask on. He says Ohioans getting the virus now are older, over 30 years old compared to summer months, and that's worrisome. Numbers to watch are hospitalization. Uh, we now have uh, double the number of people in the hospital that we had four weeks ago. Uh, so if that continues, you know, that's a pretty good indicator of deaths that will occur. Saying he'll be watching the election results, but hopes for a brighter future tomorrow. This virus just doesn't care whether you voted for Joe Biden or whether you voted for Donald Trump. Uh, it's coming after all of us. And, you know, we need to put the politics aside and get serious with this. Now I asked Governor DeWine if he would consider shutting down businesses and schools again if cases continue to rise. He said those are the places that are following protocol and not where we are seeing the spread. Reporting live in Cleveland tonight, Jesse Schultz. News 5. All right, thanks, Jesse. And the FBI is investigating robocalls that sent out fake voting information to six states today, and Ohio is one of them. The calls urge voters to stay home on this election day, falsely claiming voting was extended through tomorrow due to the long lines. Now, people in Michigan, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, and New York all got those calls. The FBI says it's aware of the robocalls and it's reminding Americans election and voting information should come from your local election officials. New York's attorney general says her office is actively investigating these calls. The United States Postal Service did not meet a federal judge's order to sweep processing centers for undelivered mail-in ballots. Judge gave the agency until this afternoon to search 27 facilities in several battleground areas to look for those ballots and send those votes immediately. The USPS argued the sweeps would disrupt its Election Day operations and that it already conducted checks this morning at every one of its processing hubs. So the judge set a hearing for tomorrow to discuss a, quote, apparent lack of compliance with a court order. Hmm. Elections officials have told us for weeks now that we may not know the official results for this presidential election for days. The pandemic is expected to slow down the counts as more people voted by mail. News 5's Caroline Sweeney caught up with the people who cast ballots for both President Trump and Joe Biden. And Caroline, what are they telling you? Well, Courtney, the voters are telling me that they want the results of this election, but with states like Pennsylvania expected to take a few days to count those ballots, the voters tell me the worth, the wait will be worth it if their candidate wins. My faith is low, but my hopes are high. That's how <laughs> Kyla Bevel felt as the polls closed earlier tonight in Ohio. And with long lines of early voters resulting in record turnout, she isn't confident a winner will be declared on this day. Oh, heck no. <laughs> if we have the results tonight, I'll be shocked. Bevel originally supported Bernie Sanders. Today, she voted for Joe Biden. So I guess I'm wondering if with the month of early voting, absentee voting, if it, you know, took away from today. Tasha Slashe is asking the question many people are thinking because of the COVID-19 pandemic, what was the impact of early voting? It's just exciting, right? It's gonna be a long night. It's very exciting. Politics is a contact sport. 
Um, and this year we, we, we played that contact sport. Raymond Green Jr. is a voting rights activist in Akron. He says the work doesn't end when the polls close. And we have to continue to do that in the future elections. But with mail-in ballot counts up this year because of the pandemic, there is some concern about the next few days. Um, chaos, confusion, um, lack of understanding um, as we continue to tally these votes. Um, to declare a winner. You know, if there's not a clear winner tonight, I think it's just a lot of anxiety, nervousness, frustration. Now, these voters are more politically active than most people in the state. And even though they're still waiting for all the results to come in, they tell me they already have their eyes set on future elections. Live in Cleveland, Caroline Sweeney, News 5. All right, we appreciate you, Caroline. And next on News 5 at 11, there is a lot of attention on the presidential race tonight. But we aren't forgetting the races that matter to you. Still ahead, we're breaking down issues affecting several Northeast Ohio communities. But before we go anywhere, we want to run through some of those results right now. Uh, we're back with your Democracy 2020 election coverage in just a few minutes. Back now with our coverage of election night 2020 and all night the focus has been on the presidential race, but there are plenty of issues important to people all around the area. Home of Bash here with a look at some of the races we are watching as well as that other big race. Homa. That's right, Rob. It's been a busy day. First up, let's start with the Cuyahoga County Public Library levy. Early voting shows it passed pretty easily. 60% voting yes. The levy will generate an extra $18 million for the library's 27 branches. It'll add up to about $35 in extra property taxes for someone who owns a $100,000 home. Next up, we have the Cleveland Schools levy voters handily passing that renewal and tax increase. 61% voting yes, 39% voting against. CMSD Superintendent Eric Gordon had warned of cuts to staff and programs if that didn't pass. Now, the new taxes on this levy means someone with a $100,000 home will pay an extra $175 in taxes every year. And the release of police body cameras in the city of Akron. Voters are saying they absolutely want that video released as soon as possible. 89% voting yes. The president of city council saying, quote, it calls for transparency and accountability when it comes to police involved shootings or other serious use of force incidents. We will be keeping a close eye on all of our local races, of course, and you know you can get it up to the minute results on our website and our News 5 app. Courtney. All right, thanks so much, Homa. Now we turn to congressional races that we've been keeping a close eye on in the Buckeye State. Republican Congressman Jim Jordan won re-election in the state's 4th Congressional District. Jordan beat Democratic challenger Shannon Freshour by more than 30 points. He's held that seat since 2007. And Republican Congressman Steve Shabbat from Ohio's 1st Congressional District is leading Democratic challenger Kate Schroeder by less than 30,000 votes. At this point, that race is still too close to call. All right, weather-wise, a quiet night. Well, inside, they're counting a lot of ballots at the BOE here in Cuyahoga County. Quiet weather on the way and warmer weather, too. Next. All right, a string of nice, warm, dry days on the way began today. We're in the 50s to near 60. Tomorrow, we're going to better that by 5 or 6 degrees. Clear tonight, coats to start in the morning. You'll be in the 40s and then warming up, 60s, even a few 70s ahead this weekend. No rain for days, probably no rain until next Tuesday. So set up those holiday light displays, finish raking those leaves. you got great weather to get outside, finish some fall projects here. 50 right now in Cleveland, a dew point low, so the humidity is, is low. Southerly breezes, 10 miles per hour, so it's not windy at all. We still have lower 50s, a lot of upper 40s, and a few little lower and middle 40s sprinkled in just for fun. High is today, Cleveland 58, right close to where we should be, 59s for Lorraine, Akron, Canton, and Dover, New Philly. Mansfield did touch 60. I think everybody gets into the 60s tomorrow, at least the lower 60s, maybe middle 60s. Here you go with dry weather and the power of five. 
Clouds have exited the building as well. They've slid off toward the north and east, and now we're under a star-filled sky. Great night for stargazing the next several nights. There's the core of the cold. It is now shifted north and east and away, and we're watching this milder air beginning to shift our way, and that is going to hang around. See these yellows here? Yeah, those are milder temps. Those are above normal temps all the way through the weekend even. So I'm thinking... We're near 70 degrees, perhaps Saturday, definitely on Sunday, and even into Monday, some lower 70s coming our way. So 45 overnight, clear and dry and chilly. Tomorrow morning as you get up and go, again, sweater weather in the 40s. But look how the recovery goes. 65 at 4 p.m. and then into the 50s during the evening hours. Tomorrow we're going to go mid-60s, sunshine, blue skies, a pleasant day. Again, nice day to get outside. Akron, Canton. Low 40s tonight, not as cold, 65 tomorrow with bright sun. Here's your seven day. We've got mid 60s. We've got upper 60s Friday, Saturday, and this is pretty much for Cleveland as well. Sunday, we're at 71. Monday, we're in the lower 70s. Even Tuesday, we may eke out 68 to 70 degrees with that shot at some rain showers. We'll be right back. One last live look now as Cuyahoga County election workers continue to count those votes. Right now, Joe Biden has more than 66 percent of the county's vote. President Trump has just over 32 percent. But overall in the state of Ohio, President Trump leads former Vice President Joe Biden 53-45 with 94 percent of the precincts reporting. Ohio right now, uh, I guess we're saying too close to call. We'll stay on it. News 5 has you covered as this election day comes to a close. Get overnight updates on the News 5 app, and we'll cover everything for you on our streaming app as well. All right, make sure you join us for Good Morning Cleveland tomorrow at 4.30, and we'll have the latest election results there as well. Take care. Have a good one.